This very important video is called Faith That Works. You see, real faith has works. Jesus gave his disciples work to do. These are works of obedience to his commandments and works of the harvest, the Great Commission. James tells us faith without works is dead. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warmed and filled without giving them the things needed for the body. What good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Works of the Mosaic Law will no longer say. God no longer ordains it, but tells everyone to follow his Son. Jesus said for everyone to be a dis his disciple, follow him, keep his word. Works of obedience to his commandments are to love God and neighbor in all circumstances. People are commanded to love others, not judge hypocritically. Feed the poor, heal the sick, show mercy and forgiveness to others, even your enemies. Do no violence to others, seek no revenge. Look after aging parents, family members, relieve widows and orphans. Most important, his first command was to repent and turn from sin and return to God. These are sins of the heart, like hate, lust, and greed. Sins of speech, like gossip, false witness, and lying. Then there are sins of false religion, idolatry, witchcraft, drugs, and drunkenness, and then sexual sins of all sorts. Next, Jesus gives his followers works of the harvest. And there are many different roles in the harvest. Some sow, others water, others reap. Every born-again believer is given gifts of the Spirit to do these tasks as the Spirit deems fit. All are called to witness, though, because they have testimony to share to the world. Some are told to preach the gospel. Others are given the job of hospitality. Some are deacons. God will tell you your purpose when you are ready. He will commission you. It is important to bear the fruits that God wants. This is his will for your life, so make your calling sure. Example 1. One year after my encounter with Jesus Christ after illness, I got called to preach his word. He said, tend to sheep. He called me out of organizational church. This was a period where I was visiting many diverse churches and getting confused to diverse teachings. This was not God's plan for me to stay in them. I did not understand this calling at first to feed the sheep because I didn't understand the word, but I needed to start obeying. And for quite a while, I was in fear of messing up because I forgot what he told me, that he was with me. Four years later, he corrected me and audibly told me not to preach out of fear or out of compulsion, but to do it because I loved him, because I, I was going through a period where I was losing friends fast. They were getting offended, and many relatives chose to shun me. But the good thing is I found others who were called to feed the sheep as well. Some came out of prison. Others worked in many different secular jobs, and these people were not people who went to seminary. Now, I patterned my life much like Paul, witnessing and trying to preach what Jesus taught, warning others about false doctrine, and try to save them out of heresy. As I am able to share information with others, I feel joy and peace and fulfillment doing my calling. And you will too, if you are doing God's will. And I pray and ask God to help me do His will, because without the Spirit I can't do any of this work. He helps me overcome fear and gives me boldness to talk to strangers. Example number two. 
Often a newborn Christian doesn't know his calling because he hasn't fully repented. He's fighting his flesh and is trying to understand his new life. I met this new person that was recently born again. He very quickly learned the scriptures but was brainwashed into once saved, always saved. He was in fornication and he was being convicted of it now. He had been living with his girlfriend for decades and had children. When he got born again, this situation started really bothering him. He was obsessed with it. He couldn't even do his job at work, and he was trying to justify it by quoting, nothing can separate us from his love. Now, I've heard this uh, quote before. Tribulation doesn't separate us from God, but sin does. And I warned him about the other scriptures. I told him, your temple is the body of the, your, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit now. If you defile it with fornication, he will destroy you. Fornicators do not enter heaven. And I got sick of arguing with him for a while, so I decided to let this cool. God sent help. A prophet showed up and said, God told her to come do business here. She interacted with my co-worker who immediately began confessing his sin. She told him he was not he was supposed to be married. He was not supposed to be cohabitating and that he was a terrible witness. God has a destiny for him, but he will not promote him until he gets right with God. Well, this this guy was consumed with feeling guilty and decided to go look for work elsewhere. Conclusions. When a person gets born again, he or she has works to do of obedience. The biggest command is to repent and wash your garments in the blood of the Lamb and begin walking a sanctified life, pursuing righteousness. The Spirit gives different callings and gifts to people who have been cleansed. All are witnesses because they had a God encounter and were born again. They have a testimony to share with the world. And many people fail right here because they're overcome with fear of man's opinions and rejection. They need to pray and ask the Spirit to help them witness. For apart from Him, you can do nothing. When one becomes a mature Christian and is obeying Jesus, walking His way, he is also given work in the harvest. The Spirit will lead them to do, to do what they're supposed to do. Many times Jesus himself will show up and tell you what to do. Other times people will read the scriptures and it will jump out at them and tell them what they're supposed to do. Now I come across many seniors who still don't know their purpose. They don't witness to Jesus to others. And I'm not sure if they've even started walking with Jesus. They have decades of church attendance. But the question is, are they doing God's will? Church attendance is not the same as doing the works God ordained for each of us, that we should walk in them. These are works of obedience to Jesus and works of the harvest to further the kingdom.